Hey dudes, it's Dax. Welcome to another episode of Jewelers University. And uh, I think I'm starting to really buy into this series here. Uh, because I gotta say, I was really humbled by a new member of our guild. He came in and he's like, hey, where do I start? And uh, most of the tutorial videos were kind of out of date. So I didn't really have a good direction for him to, him to turn to. And so I figured I'd, I'd better make my own, uh, <laughs> I have the Jewelers University series and I haven't even done a beginner series. So uh, I'm going to skip onboarding entirely because I think that's going to change so much uh, with, the, with the different wallets and stuff. And I think there'll be changes to holiday and stuff like that. And uh, um, who knows what's going to happen with crypto regulation. And uh, so I'm just, I'm just going to skip that and I'm going to go straight into the game. So when you have nothing in this game, you have two choices. You can do one, the other, or both. You either want to hit up the LP pools, which I'm not going to get into today, or you can go into the focus of today's video and you can buy questers. Um, the guys that have been here for a long time, a lot of them have probably uh, well over, well over a 500 questers that are just kind of fully automated and uh, doing a whole lot of nothing um, Just bringing in materials and uh, getting experience Okay, uh, gen right now um, as of recording this video, so that's April 15th 2024 the general consensus is to not level your questers past level 10 Moksha's moksha ruins right now are so rare that uh, it's not worth wasting them on, on heroes that are just going to be in your questing loop for you. And as of the recording of this video as well, uh, expeditions are not live. So automation is your only automatic questing feature. You Otherwise, you'd have to do this manually. So let's talk about questing. And the best place to start is on the game docs so that's defikingdoms.com info docs all right and under gameplay there's quests there's two types of quests training quests and profession quests uh, profession quests are the one type of quests that a hero can participate in earning item rewards and experience points that's xp each hero has a profession that they specialize in which gives them more efficiency when engaging in the quest. Quest rewards are determined by the hero's profession skill as well as the two stats that are associated with each profession. All right, let's jump into the tavern because if you're just starting out, unless you were gifted heroes, you probably don't have any. And if we go to the agent and we go to buy heroes, uh, under attributes, you'll find gathering profession. We go to the stats card of every hero and they have a highlighted profession. That is their main profession. And if you highlight it, it also tells you which skills are best for that profession. So we have forager, forager, fishing. Um, where's the mining floor? Huh? Usually the miners have been cheaper lately because uh, they don't have the level 10 quest unless somebody swept the floor. Wow, we actually have to go pretty far. To find someone for mining well, we have gardening here and come on now are we gonna find one this is insane I like it maybe we're missing some mining alpha right now uh, level 10 mining quests are not out yet so uh, maybe someone swept the floor <laughs> Anyway, I swear there is someone with a mining profession and you know what instead of doing this nonsense that I'm doing Take advantage of your filters and just apply a mining filter. We had to go all the way to 27 crystal to find a mining hero that's strange because the floor is 20 Don't know what's going on. Maybe somebody knows something we don't but but uh, when you are proficient in that uh, that profession it's your main profession you use less stamina to do that quest compared to heroes who are not proficient in that profession now these are the 
the gathering professions, okay? We don't want to get those confused with the crafting professions, which have not been released yet, okay? There are only four gathering professions as of the time of this video being created. Mining, gardening, fishing, foraging. Okay, now I see all these heroes uh, and they have these professions, right? We have a seer with a subclass of a priest. Uh, they have a, uh, pers a growth percentage bonus in wisdom and then they have a flat, uh, flat bonus to dexterity. And then they're proficient in fishing. Is that someone that I want to to purchase as a fisher. Uh, well, um, you can thank Stronghold here for making a graphic for you that split all four of the profession, gathering profession quests up and what their best stats are. So if we highlight it over fishing, it says agility and luck. Here it is, agility and luck. Heroes who have high growth in luck and agility make the best fishers. And then there's growth stats where they added those stats together um, to uh, just as kind of a way to order these. And so the ninja would be the best fisher, followed by the thief, sage, and bard. Versus if we go to foraging, their stats, their primary stats for foraging success rates are intelligence and dexterity. So the spellbow, dread knight, sage, summoner would be who you'd want to focus on for your foraging team. Gardening, Wisdom and Vitality, so Sage, Paladin, uh, and then Summoner. And then a lot of actually basic heroes here uh, with the Priest, Seer, Wizard, and uh, coming up with same same stats as the Dread Knight. And then for Mining, you have your Paladin, your Dread Knight, Legionnaire, Dragoon, Dark Knight, Knight, Berserker, Warrior, pretty much your tank classes um, and your high strength classes for Mining. Um, those stats go go hand in hand, so um, that's why I was a little surprised we couldn't find any floor miners because these <laughs> there's so many that uh, that are good at mining and then there's so many that are bad at mining that I just expected to see a lot there. I don't know. Okay, so do I just blindly go in and try and get a ninja for fishing? Well, no, not really. I don't I don't really know what any of this means. Cool, we can go on a fishing quest, but what's the point of that? Well, uh, again, if you go into info, next page, fishing. Alright, fishing quests can be performed by up to six heroes at a time each realm. So you just send six and then you can queue the next six and queue the next six and it'll move into your next group automatically. These quests yield fish and other rare items. So fishing basics. Uh, you can have, uh, you, you, you attempt a fishing quest, it takes 20 seconds to complete an attempt. There's 7 stamina required per attempt, but if you have the fishing profession um, as your primary, you only have to use 5 stamina per attempt. So the difference here is if you have a hero with 25 stamina, they can do five attempts, right? 25 stamina is the base, that's five attempts. 25 divided by five is five. However, if you take a hero who doesn't, so for example, if we took this foraging thief and we sent him on a fishing quest, which you can do, um, I mean, there are some people who are trying to get uh, 10 skill for every hero. I don't know why, but people are doing that. So this foraging hero isn't efficient in fishing so it will cost him seven stamina for a per attempt so if he has 25 stamina 25 divided by seven is only three so they would only do three attempts because to do four attempts you'd need 28 stamina seven times four okay a uh, required range hero you can send one to six heroes on the quest and the minimum exp gain is 15 experience or per attempt. There's also a skill level 10 fishing quest. If we jump back to the tavern, this hero is at skill level 0. After uh, after each attempt, quest attempt, there's a chance to level up your profession quest or your profession skill and when that gets to level 10, you can do level 10 fishing quest. Okay, you need a minimum of uh, fishing skill level 10 to participate 
the base experiences 25 instead of 15, there's additional chances at bonus rolls for item rewards, and the chance of skill increases as relative to the quest level is reduced by half. There's also pet bonuses for fishing. We're going to get into a separate video about pet bonuses, okay? We're not going to cover these here, but um, if you wanted to jump in here, you can see that there's different bonuses that can make your hero more efficient at fishing. And these can apply to... Um, these can apply to non-primary heroes either. You can also you can throw these on a foraging hero if you want, and they could get better at fishing. <clears throat> um, so, and they have rare fish, and they have high-value fish. Okay, so uh, you can read that further from the documents. You have your Serendale rewards, and then you have your Crystal Vale rewards. So, why do we care? This is going to start your inventory. When you have inventory, you can make items. Right now, you can make potions. You can make uh, crystals. Um, what else can you make? I don't know. Well, you I mean, right now, potions and crystals are the big thing. But also, you can get tears. You can get Shavasa runes. You can get Moksha runes. And you can get pet eggs. Okay, right here. This is where the money is made right now. Moksha runes and tears. Okay? Um, Moksha runes are rare, but look at this, this star hero here, the higher percent applies to heroes with the fishing profession gene. So just for having the fishing profession gene, you have a higher chance at getting tears, a higher chance at getting Shavas runes, and a higher chance at getting Moksha runes, just for being proficient. So not only are you only spending 5 stamina, you also have a higher chance to get these higher value items. Okay. Uh, so, what's next? Foraging. Kind of the same concept as fishing. It's almost exactly the same. Uh, 20 second quest. 5. Uh, sorry. Uh, 5. The cost of the, the stamina requirement is 5. For if you have the foraging profession gene. Same thing. You can send same heroes. The XP rewards are the same. The level 10. Uh, requirements are the same. There's even a lot of uh, similarities between the pets. The difference is the different rewards. Right here, right now, Swift Thistle is one of the highest selling um, non rune or tier rewards that you can possibly get, and you can only get it from Foraging in, in Serendale. Um, and then you have your Crystal Veil items as well, and then in both realms, same thing. You can get Guy's Tears, Shavas Runes, Moksha Runes, and with this, Great pet eggs. All right, gardening's a little different. Instead of sending six heroes, you can only send two heroes per gardening quest. Okay, gardening can be performed with up to two heroes at a time. Incentivized, um, sorry, in each of the incentivized liquidity pools. Uh, the quests that are rewarded are power tokens and jewel, as well as plants and other rare items. Okay, so you can um, have heroes garden at the, the uh, rewarded liquidity pools. You can send two at a time. You'll get, uh, you'll get power tokens back of crystal and jewel. Okay. Um, any hero can attempt a gardening quest, but heroes with a gardening profession gene will use their stamina more efficiently. So same deal. Are we seeing a trend here? <laughs> so the duration per stamina. Um, and so it takes the stamina you have and it adds time. So if you use one stamina, that's 12 minutes. Two stamina is 24 minutes, right? But if you're proficient in gardening, it's only 10 minutes per stamina. Okay. You can run one hero or two, and then minimum EXP reward is four EXP per stamina spent plus eight XP per five stamina spent. You get a bonus if you do five. You get a bonus if you do if you spend ten. Okay. There is level ten gardening quests. Okay, and of course there's differences in EXP. Uh, you get an extra roll for finding plants every ten stamina spent. And then chances for gardening skill increases are relative to the quest level reduced by half. Okay. So token rewards here. There's a calculation for your token rewards. Uh, I'm not going to go through that. Just know you can get, 
you can get jewel you can get crystal and then there's additional if you own some actual liquidity in those liquidity pools okay and this is just supposed to be a basic intro so i'm not going to dive too heavily into here all right item rewards we have blue stem spider fruit milkweed guys tears shavas runes puncture runes and green pet eggs all right and it just straight up says uh <laughs> The same stuff for um, Serendale as it is for Crystal Dale. All right, there's two types of mining quests: gold mining and token mining. Okay, gold mining can be performed by up to six heroes at a time. Okay, so we're back to six heroes instead of two. These quests award gold and can also award other rare items. Okay. Um, the quests also have a chance to just like the just like fishing, just like foraging, just like gardening. You can still get guys' tears, runes, and, and yellow pet eggs. Okay, so it kind of works like gardening uh, duration per stamina. All right, so one stamina is twelve minutes if you're not efficient, ten minutes of work if you are proficient. Um, stamina requirements one stamina you can send up to six heroes and the rewards are four XP per stamina spent plus eight XP if uh, per five stamina spent uh, the rewards are gold okay in game gold that's right here okay this is one of the ways to get gold in the game which you need for hunts and you need for duels and you need for the alchemist Okay, cost gold. And you need from the stone carver. Okay, cost gold. Okay. Let's go back to that. Um, this one's pretty simple. You do your time, you get your gold, you get and if you're lucky, you get tears, your boss rooms, function rooms. Again, bonuses for proficiency. Token mining. Token mining can be performed up to six heroes again. These unlock locked power tokens. So I have locked power tokens here. I have some locked crystal. That means when I go to my to my quest list, I can do crystal mining. Okay. Um, let's see. Where is it? There used to be a jackpot. Do they still have jackpot, or has that been? Has that been filtered out? Okay, it's still here. Way to be prepared, Dags. Way to be prepared. All right, it's the same person who does the, the gold quest. If a hero is on a gold quest, obviously they can't be on a token quest. Same rules here. 12 minutes if you're not efficient, 10 minutes if you are. Um, you can send 1 to 6 heroes for stamina, uh, 4 XP per stamina spent, 8 XP per 5 stamina spent. Okay. With these quests, you're required to select a lead miner for each quest whose stats determine the maximum amount of power tokens that can be unlocked during the quest. These stats include the hero's strength and endurance score. Okay, right back to here. Strength and endurance. Okay. And whether they have the mining profession gene, up to five additional heroes can be added to assist the lead miner, whose stats all determine the final crap quest reward. So if you send an efficient miner with a bunch of non-efficient miners, you won't get as good of rewards. If the group's total unlockable amount reaches the maximum unlockable amount, adding additional heroes will not increase the token, re uh, token reward. Okay, further, all heroes can still receive item rewards. There is a formula for unlocking. Not going to go into it because they're getting rid of this anyway. Um, and then you can get a jackpot. For every 15 stamina spent by the lead miner, the player will receive a bonus roll with a 10% chance to unlock bonus power tokens. The maximum bonus is 10 bonus tokens if the wallet has at least 1,250 locked tokens. So I don't qualify for the mining jackpot anymore because I only have 8 locked tokens. Okay, I've pretty much mined it out. Item rewards still. Guys, tears, Shavas runes, monks runes, yellow pet eggs. Okay. Alright, so. Um, we could go into determining who the best of each class, or of each profession are. Or, 
there's the hero base stat uh base stat workbook that the team has released and it can pretty much tell you who's the best in each category um and that's pretty much where those numbers were, were were pulled from so i'm not going to go into this too heavily but if we look at the stats that are required for fishing okay luck and agility so here's agility Okay, your thief has high agility, your, your monk has high agility, and looky here, your ninja. Let's zoom out actually. Come on, why am I at 150? 125? Ah, forget it, we'll go 100. Okay, harder to see on my screen. I know my picture's in the way. Your thief has high agility, your ninja has high agility, shapeshifter has high agility, your sage has high agility. So we'd expect that they might be pretty decent fishers. So who is that? Thief, ninja, shapeshifter, and sage. Let's go back here. Ninja, thief, sage, shapeshifter. Well, bard's here too. So where's bard's agility? Okay, it's a little bit lower, but what might we expect? How does how does a bard make its bump into these group of good fishers? it must have you guessed it high luck let's check so we know the top the top three for agility are uh sage shapeshifter ninja shapeshifter drops pretty low doesn't it okay so it must have bad luck <laughs> all right let's check luck okay who has high luck thief again there's bard there's ninja um what happened to our spell bow here, huh? Sage is kind of low, spell bow is kind of low. Okay. So we those are those are our uh, those are our good fishers, and you can see why, right? Ninjas have decent luck, good agility. Thieves have good luck, good agility. Not as good as the ninja. The the ninja's skills kind of uh, kind of surpass once they're combined. Uh, Sage, Bard, Shapeshifter, they all have decent luck and agility, therefore they are good fishers. So, how do I buy good fishers? Well, that all depends on how much you want to spend. Okay, so we can take, we want fishers, and you're going to follow the same procedure for all four classes. I'm just going to stick with fishing for now. Okay, let's take fishing and then let's take those classes that were good. Thief, Ninja, Bard, Sage. Was Shapeshifter good? Decent. Alright, I guess, yeah, let's throw them in there. Alright, Thief, nah, let's not, let's not. Who am I forgetting? Who am I forgetting? Ninja, Thief, Sage, Bard. Alright, Ninja, Ninja, Thief. Sage Bard. There we are. And we have fishing selected. Apply. Now what do you see here? The floor was 20. <laughs> and we're going to pay 40, a 40 crystal floor for these heroes, which is fine right now. You know, they're cheap. It's okay. This would be a good starting place for your fisher teams. Okay. But wait, there's more. We also have these boost to stats right you get a base of plus two at level one and then you have better growth percentages as you go on so the best fishers have either this blue or green or purple in agility and luck so we can say we only want fishers who are good at agility and luck agility and luck and now look what happens to your floor. All the way up to 67. But these would be good fishers. Okay. As the heroes level, they get better at professions. Because their agility and their, and their uh, luck gets higher. Agility and luck for fishers gets higher. So they get better at fishing. All right. As you level up, uncommon, rare, legendary, and mythic heroes get rarity bonus at multiples of five. So when I'm at buying profession heroes, 
I know I'm just going to set them and forget about them, but I also want them to get better as they level up. So when I'm buying Profession Heroes, I started with Commons, but now if I'm going to buy Profession Heroes, I usually go, if I'm buying Basic Heroes, I try to go for Rare. If I'm buying Advanced Heroes, like Ninjas, advanced your Advanced Heroes are your Paladins, Dark Knight, Ninja, Summoner. Advanced are better, I try to get an Uncommoner better. So since we're accepting Thieves, let's, let's kick it over to Rare. We want Agility or Luck bonus, and then we want them to have Fishing. 299 crystal okay no thieves <laughs> where are the floor thieves why are these all so high this is insane i was not expecting this okay so you're saying dads that's kind of out of my price range well get rid of the stat bonus now it's down to 75 okay so, we still want the growth in either agility or luck. Do you see how agility has growth percentages? Plus 2% primary, plus 4% secondary. So, agility and luck are still the ones that are going to grow. We're just missing that plus 2 to agility or luck, and it drops the floor down a little bit. A little bit. Okay? Mostly thieves down here. Okay? Or... Let's say you still want that plus two. Maybe drop it down to uncommon and filter by agility and luck again. Let's see. Not as expensive, but there's some good fishers here. Okay. Now, let's say you have no money and you're just starting this game on 10 bucks. Okay, forget about the classes. Just hit fishing. Just hit fishing and buy the floors. Okay? On a long enough timeline, if you focus all of your points into luck and agility, your heroes will become good fishers anyway. Okay? Now once you get them to level 10, you might think about selling them and buying some actual good fishers uh, because every transaction in this game costs money. So you want to be as efficient as possible. So eventually it won't be worth your money to be running common and uncommon heroes who aren't getting the proper bonuses in luck and agility and maximizing your yield. This is all about maximizing yield. These are profession heroes. They exist to work and to increase your, I guess, your total value of assets, right? So you want those heroes who are going to pull better loot, you want those heroes who are going to pull more expensive loot, and you want those heroes who are going to be better per transaction. So you can start at floors with fishing. Now I would not send foragers fishing if you're, if you're on a budget here, okay? And maybe even drop into, well, you know what, maybe it's not good, <laughs> maybe it's not good for fishing because Dread Knights, Belbos, and Goons are so expensive, okay? Uh, nothing wrong with a pirate fisher. Um, and even I think sages, or I mean thieves, should be pretty cheap. So, let's just say, let's grab some thieves, and let's grab some pirates, and we'll send and send them fishing, right? Still, 29, okay? Uh, nine crystal up from the floor. These will be these will be just fine to get you going on your feet, okay? Now, once you start building that. Once you start building your account value, you might want to sell them, get rid of them, dark summon them, something like that, um, and, and replace them with some rare pirates who are good at fishing who maybe have an agility or luck boost, okay? If you level a hero, they and you level them with a profession focus in mind, they will become good profession heroes, okay? They just won't be as efficient as some of these other ones who are more inclined because of their stat growth. Okay, and then just kind of to, to look at that, what am I talking about? Agility is 50% growth chance and, 50, and luck is 55% gro uh, growth chance for a pirate, right? 50 and 55. That's a chance of getting one point on a level up. Versus if you look at a ninja, so we were looking at 50 and 55 versus 
85 and 60. So both stats that you're focusing on for fishing are better for the ninja than the pirate. So a, fish, a, 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 a ninja left alone to just level naturally will usually become a better fisher than a pirate without uh, without any any influence such as the the uh, stat bonus the guy is blessing and crystals okay so just to kind of review for profession quests you always want to send the heroes who are proficient in that quest okay each quest success rates rely on two stats luck and agility for fishing intelligence dexterity for foraging Wisdom and Vitality for Gardening, Strength and Endurance for Mining. If you can, get heroes who complement the profession. Ninjas complement fishing. Uh, <laughs> foraging is a hard one. I usually go with summoners, okay? Most of my foragers are summoners, all right? Uh, gardening, it's pretty easy to grab a paladin or summoner, or even a priest, wizard, seer for gardening. And then mining, I usually go with Legionnaires, okay? Just one last look. Fishing Thieves. Okay, pretty cheap. What did I say next? Legionnaire, Legionnaire Mining, let's see. Okay, pretty cheap. All right, gardening. Let's just look at priests, because <laughs> the summoner might be out of your price range. Oh, no, priest. There we go. Did I switch over to gardening? Gardening priests. Pretty cheap. And foraging. No, foraging. What's What if you can't get summoners? What's next? Is it archer? Archer's the first basic. Jeez. Archers are pretty expensive, aren't they? Check. Foraging archers. Yeah, a little bit more expensive. Let's try ninjas and summoners for foraging. Let's see. Ah, the archer's your best bet. Okay. So foraging might be the one where you have a little difficulty. You gotta drop down this 120 range if you want to keep it cheap. Okay. So uh, if you have any questions, jump into the jeweler's discord. You should see the link to the discord in the um in the description guilds are going to be your friend <laughs> for getting your your profession quest going okay i mean we've just straight up given free heroes to people to kind of get them going all right uh we all want to help we all want to be the best um so don't hesitate to to ask some questions get in the jewelers guild ask us questions we'll help you out all right good luck